All right, today we are going over the song Cat by Death Cab for Cutie. This song is on Capo 2. Now, I've seen it played different ways, uh, live uh, in studios and also acoustic versions. I've seen them have no capo. I've seen them have capos a little bit further up, and most consistently is Capo 2. Um, also, to furthermore, I would say that most consistently the electric lead player is playing with no capo, and the rhythm player is playing with capo 2. Today, for consistency's sake, we are going to combine the two. We are going to play both with capo 2 on. All right, we're going to start off with the basic intro. We're going to take each part of the song, and we're going to segment it, and we're going to break it down after playing it. All right, here's the intro. <laughs> First thing you're going to do is you're going to start off with your middle finger here on the G string on the 4th fret. You're going to drone open strings, B and E. Open, G, down. You're going to strike here on the 5th fret, A string. You're going to do this little hammer on here. Hit the open G. And then you're going to go to these G chords. Now. There are three different G formations that he uses. The first formation is here with your index finger on the G string. Then you're going to repeat that droning little intro thing. Then you're going to come over here. You're going to pick up your index finger and you're going to drop your pinky. Uh, the guy in the band actually does it a little bit different. He uses his ring finger, but I just find it easier just to use the same formation. So uh, you're going to drop your pinky down here on the D string. Okay, and then the third formation he uses is right here. He's going to form up almost like a D chord right here. So you're going to bar down from the G string down, and then you're going to have your uh, ring finger here forming up almost like a, like a D over G kind of formation. Okay, now some of this sound is masked by organy parts. Um, it's accompanied by, and it's very subtle, but these are the chords that he does. Now the next part, you have... Uh, an octave kind of feel. Now here's the interesting part is that this right here are octaves. You have the A string and the B string octave. <clears throat> but the interesting thing is that you have this droning G string playing the whole time. And when you do that it runs down into like a diminished feel. You're gonna mute the D string and you're gonna play it. And you're gonna push it. And you're gonna do an A5. So it starts here, ninth fret, seventh, sixth, to an A5 formation. Then it's going to come over here with the octaves. Now, it's just, just a standard octave on the A and the G string. Index finger is going to be on the ninth fret. Your ring finger is going to be on the G string, 11th, uh, I'm sorry, the 11th fret. Now you're going to mute the D string and the low E string and you're going to play open. Uh, everything else. So it gives it like a full sound. Same thing here. You're going to do the same positioning except starting here with your leading finger being on the second fret. Now when you come over here to the next chord, you're going to come here. This is a major triad. And then you're going to come over here the original G position that he uses, and you're going to do like a little pull off, almost exactly like the intro. And it just repeats, so you got...
next part, which is the verse. It's pretty simplistic. It does the same exact thing the whole time. You got... And it repeats that. Uh, that's up until... He gets to All right, right now we're about to go over the chorus. Now the chorus is pretty cool. It's got two different parts in it. Now you have the electric lead and you have the electric rhythm. They're going to play two very basic parts, but um, because of how they're interacting together, it makes it sound pretty complex, and it kind of is because it's like contrasting harmonies. One is going to be going this way. The other one is going to be going this way, and it's pretty neat. So without further ado, here we go. You got the basic rhythm in its entirety. Then we'll break it down. You got... Now if you notice, it's pretty simplistic because you've got the basic intro with no push So, now, the lead player is going to be doing this, and we'll actually have a segment at the very end of this video in which you can hear how it sounds together uh, with two people playing. So, now, the electric lead player, he's going to be doing the same type of chord positioning, except he's going to be moving it up. Okay, so he's going to be doing it in its entirety, the electric lead part. <laughs> same exact octave positioning as you were with the intro, except you're going to be moving up. You're going to be doing 9th fret, 11th fret, 12th to the 16th. But then you're going to come over here and basically do the intro, kind of little hammer-ons. And that is it. Now the, uh, the electric part for the bridge is pretty simplistic. You have the basic uh, chord formations for if you're playing with somebody else, you have the basic chord formations rhythm-wise as you do with the verse. Now in the CD recording, you actually don't have that coming in until it starts getting really, really up there in the volume. You'll hear the, uh, the dynamic shift happen right before it goes back into the chorus. Uh, but there's an electric lead picking part. It's pretty simplistic. All he does is he takes a C position here and he moves it all the way up to the 12th fret making an A major position, you're going to be playing uh, actually kind of like a D over F sharp inversion here, but it goes like this. And you're just going to repeat that quite a few times, and then uh, it's going to go straight back into the chorus.